All right, welcome to chapter 4.1, day 2. And we had just discussed some bad uh, sampling techniques, and then we also mentioned the best uh, sampling techniques, which is simple random sampler, or the SRS. Now, this kind of might be a little confusing because we got another uh, thing that could be abbreviated SRS, but we will not. When we abbreviate SRS, we mean simple random sample. Um, so we will look at another type of sampling that's good. It's not bad, but it's not the best. Uh, it's a stratified random sample. And the basic idea of sampling uh, is pretty straightforward. You want to take an SRS uh, from the population and use your sample results to gain information about the population. Sometimes there are statistical advantages using more complex sampling methods. So in other words, it might be easier, uh, but it also might be more cost effective. But again, I will emphasize an SRS is the best way to sample. Well, what is a stratified, a stratified random sample? A lot of times we'll just call it stratified just to keep uh, that confusion from an SRS. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by classifying the population into groups. Uh, so maybe we get a, you know, take a population and break it into different groups. So maybe we've got nine different groups there. Uh, and each of those are called strata. Then you're going to choose a separate SRS. Now that is an SRS, simple random sample. You're going to do an SRS here. You're going to do an SRS here. You're going to do an SRS here. You're going to do an SRS there, here, and everywhere uh, that you've divided your group up into different strata. Uh, so you're going to do an SRS uh, from each stratum and then combine these SRSs to form the sample. So out of each of those, you got a little sample. Maybe you took 10 out of here and 10, 10, 10, 10 out of those. So we got a total of 90 that we would have taken out of there. That's a stratified random sample. We also have a cluster sample. A cluster sample. Um, so a stratified random sample can sometimes give more precise information about population than a simple random sample because what we've done is we've, with a stratified random sample, we've guaranteed that we have representation from each of the different groups. Um, so in a simple random sample, but that may not happen. They may have been just randomly left out. Um, but again, both sampling methods are hard to use and populations are large. So again, those are it's hard to use. Uh, an SRS and a stratified random sample, the populations are large and spread out over a wide area. So it's time consuming, it's expensive uh, to do those. So in that situation, we prefer to use a method that selects groups of individuals that are near one another. Okay. So what we do is we do a cluster sample. Okay. So it kind of does, starts the same way. We start by classifying the population into groups. So we certainly might have you know, certain groups as well too. So we might have those nine different groups um, you know, that are near each other. We'll call those different clusters. We can even think of those as different stratum as well too. Um, but uh, um, we'll have the different groups. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose an SRS of the clusters. So I'll go in here and randomly choose uh, a few of these groups. So maybe what happens through random selection, I've got this one that got chosen, uh, this one, this one, and this one. And then what you do is you take all, all of the individuals in the chosen clusters. So I would ask everybody in this group, in this group, in this group, and in this group. So I ask everybody in those different groups and sample them. That is a cluster sample. And the purpose of a sample is to give us information about a larger population. So again, remember we were sampling, we had our population uh, that was out there, and then we just took a sample uh, of that. Um, and the process of drawing conclusions about a population on the basis of the sample data is called inference. So when I get this, when I collect data about uh, from that sample, what I'm hoping to do is then use that data to make conclusions about that population. And that's what's called inference. So why should we rely on random sampling? Well, it helps avoid bias in selecting samples from the list of available individuals. 
And then also, number two, the laws of probability. The laws of probability allow trustworthy inference about the population. In other words, it keeps the, the individual sampler from influencing or conveniently choosing different data. All right. So when we do have those uh, collect that uh, data doing random sampling, uh, there usually is a margin of error uh, that sets bounds in the size of like there. So what we can do is when we do set uh, the number of people we're choosing, uh, we can also choose the margin of error as well too, because there will naturally be some error in the difference between the sample and the actual population. And then obviously, the larger the samples, will give you better information about the population. You know, so uh, you know, if I'm sampling people in a diner, it's a lot better to sample have a sample of say a thousand than just ten people. Okay, we'll continue with this on our next video, uh, and what you should be able to do now is the second assignment from day. Uh, from or from lesson 4.1, which would be day two, it should be the numbers of 13, 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25. And wish you good skill uh, at those problems. And we'll see you on day three of lesson 4.1.